Ultraneer Man here. This is part two of the generator that I made. Here's this, uh, this uses a string trimmer motor and last time I, I went over the details of the controls and now I've opened it up so you can get a look at the inside. Uh, one of the unique items of this is this drive system. And uh, you can see the drive system here. What I did is um, a lot of times people do one-to-one -one ratios from the motor to the alternator. I didn't do a one-to-one -one ratio. This is actually a 5 8 dammer pulley. And this is one of these cogged belts. It's got the little teeth on the belt. It's like a timing timing type beer, gear because uh, I want to use a very, very small, small type pulley, small setup, and a new V-belt wouldn't grip. So I did this, but actually this is not... This is just an experiment. I wanted to see how small I could possibly go. This motor turns 11,000 RPMs. And a lot of times when they do just regular Briggs & Stratton motors, you know, they only peak out 3,000 RPMs or so. So you can do a one-to-one -one ratio from the motor to the alternator to get the alternator to spin fast enough. But because this motor spins at 11,000 RPMs, I didn't need all that RPMs, and the alternator, frankly, can't really doesn't like to go 11,000 RPMs, so I couldn't do a one-to-one -one ratio. So basically what I did is I did a small pulley here, larger pulley here, uh, to give me a gear up ratio, so it gives me, I take that 11,000 RPMs and I cut it down to around 3,000 RPMs with this, and it gives me a good ratio. But now this setup, this little, th this is a 3 8 wide timing belt, you can see it blew out. The belt, belt blew out right here. It's totally totally blew out. So what I'm going to do with this setup now is I'm going to a larger pulley here, uh, basically going over this little 5 8 pulley with just so much of a bend, so much torque and everything that it just ripped us out. So I've, I've got a uh, half inch wide and I'm going to go to about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half here on the small pulley and then I'm going to go a much larger pulley out here which means I have to do a little bit of modification but I still want to maintain the small pulley, so or the small belt type setup. So that was kind of a unique setup that I wanted to experiment with that nobody's ever done before. And then now, now for the controls, uh, what I've done here, now these rheostats, or these, uh, uh, these resistors are attached to this rheostat. Now this rheostat is what controls the alternator along with the voltage regulator. I can switch it from manual to automatic. If I go to automatic, then it works off the internal voltage regulator inside the alternator. If I go to manual, then it goes to this re rheostat. And my rheostat wasn't the right, right weight ratio, so I had to add some resistors in here to do it. Now here's the other part. This is a 10SI series alternator, a GM alternator. The 10SI series alternator for little generators and things. This is a very, very good alternator. This is one of the very first... Uh, well, it was the very first internally regulated alternator that GM did. The SI, this is the SI series. The SI stands for Systems Integrated, which means the voltage regulators built in. Uh, the alternator prior to this was called the DN series, the 10DN. That's what GM did. They ran it from you know the early 60s up to around 69. The uh, 10SI came out in 69. Corvette was the very first one to use the 10SI. The by 72 all of GM vehicles use the 10SI. So between 69 and 72, you have a mix whether it's going to... Corvettes were the very first ones to use the systems integrated 10SI series alternator. Now what I've done, and, and how this rheostat works, on the back of GM alternators, on these 10SI series, they have what's called a D-hole. This D-hole is right here. A lot of times, it, now this is a chrome plated unit, most of the time, the 10SI series alternators have round holes in here. At the base of the round hole, you'll see this D hole. Uh, basically, what the, the D hole, that's called, that's a full fielding hole. In other words, you can make your alternator full field. Full fielding means that you bypass the voltage regulator inside of the alternator. In other words, if, if you have a, an alternator and it quit and you're not sure did the voltage regulator go bad or is the alternator itself go bad 
right here, if you shine a light in on a D hole in a GM 10 SI, 12, any of the SI series that, that have this D hole, uh, if you shine a light in there, you see a little tab of metal sticking down. And if you touch a little screwdriver, if you were to take a screwdriver and push it inside of here, I'm gonna like this little awl. If you were to touch a little awl in here and touch it on that tab and then ground it to the case, ground it right to the side of the case, what that does is bypasses the voltage regulator and makes the alternator run full blast. So that's what I've done with this rheostat setup, is I've actually ran a wire in here connecting to that little tab of metal, and so the other end of this rheostat just goes to ground. And that's how, this is what they, this is a GM alternator, the early GM alternators are called an A-circuit type alternator. In other words, the uh, one, it has two brushes in it, one of the brush has full power at all times, always full power, then the other brush is a ground brush and that's what the voltage regulator varies the ground voltage to control that alternator. So that's what I did as I actually come out of this rheostat, I went in attached to that 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 little tab in there and by varying the rheostat to ground I can vary the output of the alternator. That's why I have the switch that goes from manual to automatic. If I go to automatic it's dealing with the voltage regulator inside and if I go to manual then it runs off this rheostat which I've set up here. So, which has worked out really well, because then I can, you know, a situation where you've got an external charging unit and things like that, you don't necessarily need the voltage regulator. You really want to get as much power into whatever you're charging as possible. So that's why you use this wrist app. Now, the other thing about alternators, alternators have to have a battery to start. And sometimes I may not want to run a battery. I have these these controllers here if I want to hook them right to a light bulb and run the alternator uh, I can do that but you must have a battery to start out start out the other a lot of people don't know that know that I get people calling me all the time saying well I spun my alternator with a drill and I can't get anything out of the bag out, out of the power post I tell them you got to have a battery to get it started so but what I've done here a little unique thing I'm just using this little bitty 9 volt battery right here to start out this alternator. What I've done here again is say I have this, I have a little diode. Let's let's get in so you can see that better. All right, we'll get you in here closer. There you go. Right here, this is a little diode. And diodes are one-way gates. They let power flow one way, but not back the other way. And basically, I have this set up to, I've got this set up to, uh, let me get this back out here again. I've got this set up to my activation button, see? So what that does is when I, when I push, push the activation button, power comes out of the 9-volt battery, and it ends up going to the activation lead on the voltage regulator and it goes to the battery post because you need power at the battery post and you need power to excite these alternators with a self-exciting regulator so I use this little 9 volt battery so you can use a little 9 volt battery to activate your alternator but you gotta have a diode in here because you want the power to come out and start the alternator but you don't want the power to flow back into this little 9 volt battery there goes the diode. So that's how I set up this wiring. Now I, I do have these 10 SI alternators. A 10 SI alternator for little generating units is, is really a good alternator. It does really good all power at low RPM. They're really economical. They're easy to set up. And uh, so that's how I've done that. That's how I set up this little generator. This whole thing, it only, it only weighs 28 pounds. It's, it's relatively lightweight for what I've done here. And, it, and you probably even make it smaller yet, but I've just, I've just prototyped this out. I've got to do a little modification to get that belt set up just right, and then uh, and uh, get the belt set up just right, and uh, that's all we need to do with this, this setup. If you've got more questions or if you need 10 SI alternator, just give me a call or visit my website at alternatorparts.com.